Nom Nom delivers fresh food with whole ingredients, backed by veterinarian science. Science tells us that a dog's health starts in the bowl, so improving their diet is one of the best ways to help them live a long and happy life. Nom Nom's food is full of proteins your dog loves and the vitamins and nutrients they need to thrive. All you have to do is order, pour, and serve. Ready to make the switch to fresh? Order Nom Nom today. Go to https colon slash slash trinom.com forward slash curveball and get 50% off your first order plus free shipping. That's https colon slash slash T-R-Y-N-O-M dot com forward slash curveball. Plus, Nom Nom comes with a money back guarantee. If your dog's tail isn't wagging within 30 days, Nom Nom will refund your first order. No fillers, no nonsense, just Nom Nom. Welcome to the Living the Dream podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by international speaker and best-selling author, Adam Hart. Adam focuses on helping busy parents develop a better quality of life as well as develop deeper relationships with their partners and their children. He focuses on nervous system regulation. He focuses on energetic attraction as well as holistic healing. So we're going to be talking to him about all that he's doing to help everybody live a better quality of life. So Adam, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, I appreciate it, Curtis. Thanks for having me. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I will say that um, a big part of how I live my life has a lot more presence than it once did. And I guess it's uh, really a story or a journey of how I cultivated a relationship with presence and what that actually means in modern society. And so most of my time is now spent as a father, an athlete, and a coach, and guiding uh, others into that same space of recognizing how they can optimize their mental and physical health through the use of presence. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that, that's my my uh, my big discovery um, was in hitting my rock bottom moment and and finding that source of light that uh, spoke to me in a way that guided me with a little more ease to feeling uh, happier and healthier. It it took something, but uh, I've been living aligned to my purpose for the past 15, 20 years now. So I feel very grateful. So you're an athlete. Uh, t- t- tell us about that and, and tell us what kind of athlete you are. Yeah, well, I'm a mountain-based athlete, and that's kind of where the source of light came from. Um, I was pre-diabetic and overweight in my 20s, suffering with ADHD, uh, impulsive behavior, a lot of emotional swings, a lot of self-doubt. And I discovered rock climbing, and in particular, indoor rock climbing was my starting point. And as I started rock climbing, there was something that it was doing to me mentally in a healthy way that no medication, no therapist, no doctor, um, no program, no self-help book in the past had ever given me access to. And I'm not knocking those things, but there was something that I was able to do in the pursuit of climbing that was teaching me how to regulate my own response to stress. And as I dove all in on climbing as an occupation in early 2000, um, so this is 20 years ago, I discovered that in what I was learning around my own ability to manage my daily stress response, that 
there was an opportunity to teach what I was learning from rock climbing and bring it into the corporate wellness area, which is where I first started to do my coaching. Having had occupational burnout in my mid-20s, that was the first place I said, wow, I know how stressed out I was when I was grinding away every day, feeling so unfulfilled and trying to live the supposed dream and just feeling so so weak and, and depleted. And so I, I began that journey of training and coaching in a way where I wanted to give others in the, in the workplace an avenue to manage the stress of their day. And it came from my discoveries from rock climbing. Okay, well, when you were young, you were diagnosed also with ADHD. So tell us about that and how that impacted you growing up. Yeah, well, you know, when I was probably about 11, 12, I was diagnosed learning disabled, put into a separate classroom and put on medication for ADHD. And, you know, at the time I didn't realize how dark my thoughts had become began to to kind of loop in this pattern but as i got older i obviously i recognized it because there was a lot of symptoms that came with that but it became a very hard and heavy label for me as a child I'm told um being being learning disabled put out of a different class and you know so there's a lot of self-esteem and self-worth shame guilt thoughts that uh i lived with a lot in my childhood and my main escape to feel some sense of relief was sugar. That was my number one was to go to sugar and obviously uh, to numb out to the screen as much as I could. And uh, I didn't um, didn't really know how to support my mind and my mind's disruptive uh, thought process until I got into my late 20s. And obviously when, when the climbing started to uh, become my dominant health wellness practice. I then started to learn about what my mind had done with that diagnosis and how it had really locked me into a lot of self-sabotaging thoughts because of the stress that it was inducing me owning that as who I was and the label of being ADHD. And uh, when I realized what had been happening for a long time, I was able to start to clean up the attachment to that and release the emotional connection to it in a really powerful way. So tell the listeners about your kids and and, and tell us how you, or what, what and how you have created a deep emotional bond with them. Mm, yeah. All the work that I do is related to nervous system regulation. And essentially what that entails is getting very intimate with our own relationship between our brain and our mind. You know, on average, we have 70,000 thoughts a day. And the way that the nervous system filters all of those and every moment of our lives is filtered through our nervous system. And if we're not nourishing that relationship, the brain will cause a lot of triggers. It will cause a lot of thoughts that produce the reactivity that we know we have in our lives, which we know it impacts all the areas of our lives. So it's all a matter of finding practices that allow us to teach our brain to feel calm, to feel safe, to feel at ease in the moments that it's trying to create that reactivity, whether it's with your kids, whether it's with your partner, whether it's at work and you get an email you don't like and you feel triggered by it. These are the moments that we have an opportunity to train our brain to not hold on to the stress of that and to give us more peace. And so in our house, we have pretty much set it up in a way where we're constantly having open dialogue. And my kids now are nine and 11. So it's a little different in this stage, but it's all around giving them the language of understanding around why they have the emotions they have, why they feel the way they feel, but then also giving them tools to play around with the ability to change those and shift them and not to label any feeling or emotion as bad. Like my son came home today from school and he was really sad. And as I gave him the space to share, you know, he expressed how he felt triggered and panicked by doing some, some spelling in class today. And it really triggered him. 
And so in those moments, the number one thing is me being able to hold space to not need to fix anything. And as parents, it's a very tricky place to be. We tend to want to get right into this protective mode and fixing mode, and that's actually a stress response. So we really want to find our our, our way into calming that down so that we can hold a space of what's called co-regulation, meaning it's not so much the words I say in that moment to my son, Jacob. It's more of in terms of the energy that my nervous system is holding that's allowing him to feel safe, to be okay with his emotions. And so that, you know, that that's one example which plays out in a large part in our lives. It's how do we as the parents hold the space for our kids to feel safe in their own emotions and explore them. But then it's also setting up practices that we can dive into every day that give you a sense of what it feels like to feel at peace, to feel calm, to feel present. And for that, there's many, you know, there, there, we have very, uh, in terms of um, how do you access that feeling in a way that's very quick? One of the main ways that we utilize one is obviously our breath. So we have a breath practice. I call it heart flow. It takes 33 seconds to do. And so we practice a lot of that breath practice throughout the day just to feel the peace and calm. Another one that's really powerful that we utilize is grounding. And this is the idea of just getting outside, getting your bare feet on the ground or putting your hands on a tree and just feeling the connection to the earth. And that has a biological ripple effect that helps to reset the nervous system automatically and bring us back into that calm parasympathetic state where we feel the emotional connection to what it is to be peaceful and calm. And so in that question that you ask, for me, it's so much of, of my relationship with my kids is continuing to try my best to give them access to what it feels like to be a human being at peace, a human being at calm, and to know how biologically they know how to reproduce the experience so that as they get older, their mind can't lock them into the stressors of adult life. Because if you go into adult life without having some of these skills, the stress of your money, of your relationships, of your fin- well, finance money, your career and your health, your brain starts to learn patterns of disruption around those and it starts to get to be quite heavy for us to experience fulfillment. And so I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it absolutely does. Now tell the listeners uh, about the the six steps that helped you shift your internal belief system and gave you emotional freedom. Oh, uh, well, definitely the the number one was being able to start to notice the patterns of my own mind, All right? So I started to pay attention to, you know, this This was 20 years ago when I started to, to rock climb, I recognized that I actually had the ability to reset in the same moment I was feeling quite anxious, that I could reset the response. And when I realized, wow, I can reset my anxiety when I'm climbing, but I feel the same anxiety when I'm at the grocery store waiting in line or when I'm stuck in traffic or, you know, all these different areas back then that I knew I was feeling anxious, I now had a tool to be able to work with that response and start to change it. And so step one is to kind of do a, a, a mind map of where in your life do you notice you're, you're anxious? And, you know, again, with the adult themes, there's our, again, our health, our relationships, our finance and our career. And you're going to know that there's going to be some patterns in each of those areas that right now you're looping thoughts around. So just pay attention to what those are, start to write some of them down, and then you want to just work with one to get started. And when you identify the one, and maybe it's, you know, you want to be less emotionally triggered around your partner. Okay. Now, every time you notice you're getting triggered by your partner, now you're going to train your brain to calm down in that same moment. And this is that heart flow breath practice. It takes 33 seconds to do. And essentially what you're doing is you're creating this this reset where you drop back into your parasympathetic nervous system and you turn your brain, the frontal lobe of your brain back on and you feel more calm and more peace. 
Now the key here is also at the same time is step three is you want to get in touch with what you do want. Now I know I don't want to be reactive. I don't want to be resentful towards my partner. You know what? While I'm doing this breath practice for 33 seconds, I'm also going to feel into my heart how I want to feel about my relationship, how I want to feel about my partner. What do I want this to be? And if you do that and you get really connected to that emotional state of that, it's amazing how you can start to teach your mind to let go of the trigger and start to have your relationship show up more in alignment with that emotional frequency. From there, it's a matter of continuing to notice, 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 celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. This is this whole energy of giving to the universe of saying, yes, this is what I want. Thank you so much. I, I'm no longer being triggered in this one. And now you're bringing me all of this beautiful interaction around my relationship. Awesome. The final step in the process in step six is really around holistic wellness. It's it's starting to now, now look in terms of, okay, so if you if you have a more nourished relationship between how your mind functions and you're no longer full of all these triggers and reactions to everything in your life, now you have some space to actually put energy towards the six key areas of holistic wellness. And that's your sleep, it's your nutrition, it's your movement or fitness, it's your relationships around you, it's your environment that you live in. You know, what's the setup of your home, of your office, of your car that optimizes your quality of health and and further optimization of your breath? And when you when you approach that in a holistic way where you have your mind and nervous system functioning in harmony, those elements don't create a stress response, not as much. But in modern society, we tend to just focus on those areas or one of those areas. And if we don't know how the brain will use our new diet, well, we know most of them leave us feeling frustrated and guilty. And same with a new fitness program. As soon as it creates stress, your brain is going to find ways to try and sabotage it. And so by working with the nervous system first, like we like we do in the six-step process, by step six, now you can start to bring all these other areas of holistic wellness in, and it becomes much easier to live the best version of yourself possible. Well, talk about one must-do thing for busy parents on a daily basis to be able to keep peaceful, to keep peace and calm. Yeah, and in order to to feel the experience of what it is like to be a calm human in modern society, we have to train it. We really have to train it in. And it's very much like going to the gym and building muscle. But the only thing we need to focus on is what's called toning the vagus nerve. This is the main part of the autonomic nervous system, right? The nervous system works automatically, whether we're playing a role, a conscious role in it or not. What we want to do as parents is we want to bring more consciousness to the vagus nerve and train it to be in a space of what's called coherence. And so this is that breath practice, the heart flow, heart flow, heart flow, heart flow. The more we practice this throughout the day and knowing it only takes 33 seconds to do, the more we practice, the more you're building the the muscle of your vagus nerve and the more you're going to learn what it feels like when you are being triggered by your mind. Most of us right now, we, we, we have these experiences where we're, we're very triggered and we're not really connecting to the space between the thought and the action that comes next or reaction. And what the vagus nerve allows us to do and what this breath practice allows us to do is start to create some space, some space between when the thought hits us and the action that comes next. And if you can learn to master that space, evolves into the most fulfilling, most growth-oriented, and most um, enjoyable life experience. But it really takes commitment. It takes dedication because the brain does not like it. And it really, once we stop reacting to certain patterns, your brain begins to perceive those as a threat because you're no longer giving it the adrenaline from your fight or flight stress response. And your brain doesn't like that. It likes the adrenaline as its main source of energy for survival. And so there's this process that when I work with my clients, 
there is a strong dedication to the first month of this work where if you are committed to these bre- the, the 33 second resets throughout your day, you know, you're talking about six times a day. So it's less than five minutes of work to do. But the power of what it does for your for your vagus nerve and your understanding of what it feels like to have that type of space between your normal triggers and your normal reactivity, it's super inspiring. And you also begin to realize, wow, so I don't have to spend all these hours looking for the next fitness program to join or the next diet that I need to restrict myself on all these things that I really wish I want to and could still eat. All that stuff you can let go and you can start to work with your own magic in a way where, yeah, you can look at the nutrition and the the fitness after, but you're going to be coming from it from a place of so much more peace and calm that it all kind of flows with a lot more ease. So talk about emotional, emotional frequency and how it relates to living more fulfilled. Mm. This was kind of like the, 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 law of attraction, manifestation, part of what I discovered that I didn't see coming. You know, the more I rock climbed, the more I was spending hours and hours and hours a day immersed in the regulation of my own nervous system, teaching my nervous system to be calm so I could perform and actually, you know, have the strength and the focus and the endurance to keep going. And as I would come home after climbing, and feel triggered by certain things, I would right away, I would be able to reset it. And next thing I knew, I was finding myself attracting more things that made me feel at peace and made me feel excited and made me feel motivated. The first one that showed up for me was was all around food and nutrition. Next thing I knew, you know, I was pursuing to become a rock climbing guide. And next thing I, that, that showed up was me playing in my kitchen, almost like somebody who discovers a clean canvas and starts to paint and realizes, wow, this is really nice. I I really enjoy painting. That's what came to me was all of a sudden I realized I love to be in my kitchen playing around with food and learning how to create healthier versions of the things I grew up with. Like, how do you make a healthy macaroni? How do you make healthier pizza? How do you make healthier cookies? And I found myself so inspired that I actually ended up writing a best-selling cookbook all around my discoveries that came from an emotional frequency that came from a feeling I was holding in my body and particularly in my nervous system that allowed me to continue to manifest more time in that frequency. And essentially what this, what, what I'm getting at two parts. One is the resetting of your nervous system in the moments that you're feeling triggered or reactive is the most powerful act of love possible. And so what that does is it gives you access also at the same time to change the emotion connected to how you're feeling in that moment. And it comes from your nervous system. And that's the part that's getting sent out, the quantum field, the universe, God, whatever we call it, the frequencies coming from that heart nervous system connection that when you tone your vagus nerve, it opens up this ability to feel the emotions in your body in a way that most of us have blocked off since childhood. And I know for myself, before even my ADHD diagnosis, I was completely blocked off from emotion. Part of my survival mechanism of my childhood was to not feel because if I felt I would get hurt. And so as we learn to hold space to clean up that that, uh, communication, you then also start to realize that you can play with the frequency, almost like a thermostat of your own emotional frequency. And when you do that, you start to manifest more opportunities to feel and connect to the same emotion that you're now holding. The reason why we don't know that this is how manifestation works is because most of us are just stuck in an emotional frequency that is is very closely related to what most of our, our our areas of life look like, which a lot of it is frustrating. A lot of it has worry. A lot of it has problem solving. A lot of it, you know, it's all around fixing things and trying to control it and, you know, anxiety and depressive thinking. And so, yeah, that's the dominant emotions that you're going to be experiencing. 
experiencing and it's not going to be healed from a diet and from meditation and from from yoga i mean these are all beautiful things but the true power comes from really nourishing the vagus nerve throughout the day all day long it, 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 i mean it's not going to be perfect it's not about perfection but the more you can notice your patterns of reactivity and train your brain to let go of those you're then going to recognize the true power of your own emotional frequency in terms of the manifestation part. So tell us about uh, about your co coaching program and what people can expect if, if they go through it. Yeah, so the Unleash Your Energy is the coaching program. It's a three-month three commitment. And essentially, you're looking at three phases. The first phase is the noticing phase. It's just getting very, very committed to practicing heart flow six times or more every day, paying attention, starting to map out where you're recognizing you're having these reactivity thoughts, and then really owning the ability to feel the peace, feel the calm. By the second month, and, and that's not easy, like the first month, the brain is really challenging us in this process. So there's a beautiful community of support around, but you do have to be disciplined in your ability to do the work because your brain is, you know, week two is usually where it starts to realize, wow, wait a minute, you're not reacting the same way as you were before. Hmm, I'm going to get a little louder now and try and trip you up. And so there really needs to be that commitment there. By, by the second month, you start to notice the manifestations of your commitment to being more at, in your parasympathetic nervous system, more at peace, more calm. And so in that process, you know, now you're elevating the emotional frequency. We go through a process of working with you in terms of identifying how you want things to be. How do you want all your relationships to feel? How do you want your career? What's the passion? What's the purpose? What do you want to be connected to in terms of your emotion? And we, and we further ingrain that into your frequency so that it becomes that much easier for you to notice it. And when you start to notice how it's showing up, again, you're just, you're, you're celebrating it, celebrating, celebrating it, but then you're also able to move into that space with more inspired action and a clear and focused mind. And that's a huge piece that a lot of us don't even realize we're working at a fraction of our mental capacity. So month two gives you access to more of that capacity. And then the third month is the optimization month. That's the month where we, now that you're in a healthier nervous system space and you're feeling more at ease and more calm, now we're going to look at those areas of wellness, the sleep and nutrition and fitness. And we're just going to learn some really beautiful things in each of those areas that you can bring into your life. No restrictions. It's a matter of how do I bring in these sources of light that are going to help me sleep better? They're going to help my, my nutrition intake in a way where I have more sustained energy and my fitness so that it's it, it really rounds out the ability to feel at peace my relationships how do i work with my relationships and start to show this to my family in a way where they resonate with what i'm learning and want to do it with me so it becomes more of a community around you and by the time you're, you're done the three months you're you know if you've followed it as it's designed you're in a very very powerful place that is really tricky for it to ever be taken away from you unless your brain holds you back, right? Unless you're the one that gives in to what your brain is saying and you don't do the reset, then it's, you know, it's a powerful thing. It'll try and pull you back in if you don't keep consistent at the training and the strengthening of your vagus nerve. But you will have all the tools and the strength by the time you're done to, you know, you'll be able to notice you know, it's almost an immediate um, feeling emotional experience when you recognize your brain tripping you up. It, it becomes almost comical that you, you know, you're able to just recognize all the places you used to be so triggered. And when your brain tries to pull you back in, you know, it, it becomes so obvious. And that's a beautiful place to be. Okay. Tell the listeners about your book and how to get it and what they can expect when they read it. The book is The Power of Food. It is my journey of how I overcame my sugar addiction without any restrictions and is based off of this work and how I turned the sugar addiction into a powerful source of love. 
You can get it on uh, uh, Amazon is the easiest, but it is a uh, North American release. So every major bookstore carries it, but uh, Amazon is the easiest place to grab it. And there's also a hundred recipes all based off of what I uh, discovered around uh, adding more plants into my diet, not to restrict other things, but as I added more nutrient dense plants into my, my meat and dairy diet, I just found that, uh, it really helped with my daily energy levels. Do you have any current upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about? Well, there, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying getting this message out there. And for any parent who's there, um, I do have a downloadable PDF of the six steps that we shared today. If anyone's interested in this really resonates, then my website um, is the best place to go which is clearimpact.io, clearimpact.io. And you can download a free version of those six steps right there. That was going to be my next question. (laughs) Awesome. Clearimpact.io. That's it. All right. So close us out with some final thoughts. Maybe if that was something that I forgot to talk about that you would like to touch on or just any final thoughts you have for the listeners. Yeah. The last thing I'll say is um, nature is our mentor. All right. I think with social media these days, we get caught up in putting so many others on pedestals and looking at everybody else and saying, oh, I wish I was like them. I wish I had what they had. But just know that Mother Nature's law is abundance. And when you when you honor that and, and be with that, it's got a lot of wisdom for us. And the wisdom is in that form of feeling peaceful, feeling calm. So the last things I'll say is the more often we can get outside and be in nature, be close to nature, you'll feel the feelings that you're craving right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Adam Hart, clearimpact.io. If you want to live a better quality life and develop deeper relationships, check out his work, pick up his book, keep up with everything that he's up to. Please be sure to follow, rate, review this episode after listening and share it to as many people as you know. If you have any guests or suggestion topics, see Jackson102 at Cox.net is the place to send them. As always, thank you for listening. And Adam, thank you for joining us and sharing your expertise. Thanks, Curtis. I appreciate you having me. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.